he can't simultaneously believe that the virus was going to be bad, thus want to downplay it, and then also think that the virus wasn't going to be all that bad and downplay it for nefarious reasons. Those two things cannot possibly happen. They cannot be true at the same time. Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content, which will make America a better place and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. And today's Daily Dose of Stupid, they've caught Trump in a lie. That's right, they caught Trump red-handed. They caught him lying. Just And, and this is going to be, because the media is convinced, this is going to be the thing that takes him down, the thing that is going to be the, the final nail in the coffin of the Trump presidency and administration. You know, just like the Billy Bush tape and, you know, the Paul Manafort scandal and the Steele dossier and, and Jeff Sessions colluding with the Russians and Donald Trump Jr.'s emails and when he fired James Comey and the Stormy Daniels thing and George Papadopoulos and Roger Ailes, and the Mueller report, and the Ukraine call, or, you know, when he supposedly was calling World War I vets suckers and losers and didn't want to go to visit their graves. Just like all those times, this is the end of the Trump president. You know, for a guy that is still president, Trump has had an awful lot of ends to his presidency. His presidency has ended an awful lot for a guy that is still in office. So this is the stupidity that we're going to be focusing on in this Daily Dose of Stupid. The media always convinces itself that these things are really big deals and, and they're going to have some kind of major impact on the election or in, in some of the cases of, that I've just mentioned that it's going to result in his impeachment or removal from office or all these other things. And nothing comes of it. It's always the same old story, the same old, as Aerosmith would put it, the same old song and dance. So the first clip is a clip that they're making a big deal out of that seems kind of benign on its face, but pay attention because they're saying that the, the scandal comes into play when you combine it with the next clip we're going to show. So this is the original quip, uh, clip that was recently released by Bob Woodward. You just breathe the air. That's how it's uh, passed. And so that's a very tricky one. That's a very delicate one. Uh, it's also more deadly than your, you know, your, even your strenuous flus. Okay, so in that clip, what President Trump is talking about there is the virus may be airborne, it may be really easy to contract, and it, it may be even worse when you get the sickness than even your strenuous, few, uh, um, your, your strenuous uh, flus. Which, by the way, most of that turned out to be accurate. Now, it wasn't as bad as they were predicting when this was recorded and on February the 7th. It wasn't nearly as deadly it did have a high contraction rate, a higher contraction rate than the flu, but not nearly as bad as we thought that it was. And it is worse than the flu for certain people. If you're over a certain age, if you have a comorbidity, something like that. So there was some truth to that. And on its face, it seems like there's nothing wrong with Trump saying that. The reason that the, the Democrats are saying that this is scandalous is because they're saying that Trump knew it was really bad. They knew that it was going to be a very bad virus, but then intentionally downplayed it for some kind of political or perceived political gain. And that is proven by this clip that happens significantly later, over a month later, on March the 19th, where Trump was talking about downplaying the virus. Now it's turning out it's not just old people, Bob, but just today and, and yesterday. Some startling facts came out. It's not just old, older yeah, exactly. young people to plenty of young people. It's clear just from what's in on the public record that you went through a pivot on this to, oh, my God, the gravity is uh, almost inexplicable and unexplainable. Well, I think, Bob, really, to be honest with sure, you. Sure, I want you to I be. wanted to... Uh, I wanted to always play it down. I still like playing it down. Yes, sir. Because I don't want to create a panic. Ooh, they've got him now. Trump didn't want the public to panic. That makes him a very bad, very orange man. 
So the allegation here, it's not that hard to understand. What they're trying to say is, this is Trump saying, well, I always wanted to downplay the virus. Uh, but, you know, they're saying that that combined with the February 7th clip, that that proves that Trump knew that the virus was very, very, very bad and that it was going to be this, this huge ordeal and that he was intentionally trying to downplay the dangers of the virus and, in his own words, trying to do it to prevent a panic. Now, whether or not you agree with the idea that any government official, right or left, should be less than forthcoming with people in order to try to keep a panic from happening, we could have that debate. I think that, you know, there's, there's merits to both sides of that. Uh, and that, that is true regardless of who it is. But here's the thing. That's not what Pro President Trump is saying there anyway. Have you met President Trump? Media? You've been covering him for, what, five years now, almost? Have you never seen anything that President Trump has done? Have you not watched the guy even before he was president? Trump says whatever is to his advantage at the moment. It's one of the qualities that I find most annoying about the man. But that's who the guy is. That is consistent with everything that we have seen from President Trump thus far. And what was going on in that clip that you're talking about is President Trump was actually trying to encourage people to take the virus seriously. Because if you remember the timeline and you know what was going on in March 19th, Trump was trying to encourage different states to take the virus very seriously and take drastic measures, which is why he was saying, look, I always wanted to downplay it. My instinct was to not play into this. I wanted to make the virus sound less important or less deadly than it really was, but I can't do that because it is that uh, problematic. It is going to be this really big, huge global pandemic. That's what President Trump was actually saying in that clip. Now, did President Trump communicate that in the clearest possible way? No, he didn't. The president speaks in word salads. But there would be no motivation whatsoever for President Trump, who at the time, March 19th, when this was recorded, for him to be in the middle of trying to convince states to shut down and take it seriously, for him to say, you know what, I was intentionally downplaying it. I knew it was way worse than it was, and I just decided, no, nah, it's, it's not that big a deal, and I'm just going to downplay it. That makes no sense if you know the timeline and know when President Trump was saying that. He was saying, look, my instinct was to downplay it, and if even me, the guy who wanted to downplay it, is saying that it's serious, you should take it seriously too. That's the point that Trump is trying to make. It would be like me saying, for example, uh, I guess the, the thing that I am most uh, ardent on would be being anti-communism. It would be like me saying, look, if I'm saying they're not communist, they're not communist because I'm the most anti-communist guy that there is. If I had worded it in that way, it could sound like I was intentionally trying to downplay the dangers of communism. But that's not what I was doing. I was saying, look, if I'm saying that it's not communism, obviously it's not communism. That's what President Trump is trying to emphasize to people. If I, the king of downplaying things and not wanting it to be a big deal, I wish it weren't a big deal, is saying it's a big deal and we need to take it seriously, then that means you should take it seriously too. That's the essence of what Trump is trying to convey to the public when he is speaking to Bob Woodward at that moment. So, um, remember as well, that even, let, let's say, just to play into their argument and sort of break it down, even if they were right, even if their allegations are 100% true and Trump really believed that the virus was going to be this evil, terrible, horrible thing that was going to, you know, wreck the economy and cause a lot of people to die and get sick, even if it was as bad as he was predicting that it would be at that point on March 19th, even if that were the case, how would downplaying it help him politically? Because the allegation here is that Trump is acting nefariously, correct? Correct that he knows that the virus is much worse than it is, but he is admitting to downplaying it because he would gain some kind of political advantage or, or get some kind of political leg up. If he really believed that, if he really believed it was going to be this bad, how would downplaying it help him? That doesn't make any sense. And for further reference on this, just check out this article in the New York Times, 
And this was taken right around the same time. In fact, I believe that this was March the 13th, so just six days before the event in question that we're talking about here. So this is the New York Times saying that the CDC scenarios were depicted in terms of percentages of the population. So this is a report directly from the CDC. Between 160 million and 214 million people in the United States could be affected over the, over the course of the epidemic. And then it skips down to the bottom. As many as 200,000 to 1.7 people could die. So again... Let's just play into their argument, assume that their argument is correct. These were the estimates coming out of the CDC that Trump would have known about at the time. So let's say that because of this, Trump thinks that it is very bad and, and very terrible, and it's going to be a very, very bad virus that's going to kill up to almost 2 million Americans. In what universe does Trump look at that and go, you know what we should do? We should downplay it, you know, to protect the economy. Are you really making the case that President Trump, even if you believe he's nefarious and he's Hitler and he doesn't care about people's lives, even if you suggest that the only thing he cares about is political power and staying in office and all of this other stuff, why would he do that? Because any political advisor on planet Earth would tell him that if you're looking at a choice between 1.7 million dead Americans or a crash in the economy that you are far more likely to get reelected if you're the guy who oversaw a crash in the economy versus the guy that oversaw 1.7 million Americans dying. There is no universe in which the political math would suggest that a person should take that option if that option is available to him. There is no motivation whatsoever for President Trump to intentionally downplay a virus that he believed at the time was going to be much worse than it turned out actually being in order to score political points because he would actually score political points doing the opposite of that if that's what he really believed. And so they find themselves in a catch-22. Either Trump really did believe that the virus was going to be this bad, it was going to be this terrible, therefore he would have had no political motivation to have tried to downplay the virus, or he didn't really believe that and thus downplayed the virus thinking that it wasn't going to be as bad as it was, and turned out being right. Either way, it doesn't play into this narrative that he knowingly thought the virus was going to be bad, but refused to shut down the, you know, to, to suggest shutdowns or pretend that the virus wasn't going to be that bad. There's no motivation for him to do so. This theory only makes sense with hindsight, not in the moment. Yes, somebody that is looking at the story now, looking at it with hindsight, with the sensibilities that we have now, the knowledge that we have now, that it turns out the virus wasn't nearly as bad as that, that it wasn't going to result in 1.7 million Americans dying, that it wasn't going to have two-thirds of the American population contracting this virus. With that hindsight now, you could presumably look at this and go, ah, see, President Trump was downplaying the virus, and but there's no possible way for Trump to have known that in the moment. And frankly, if Trump could look into the future and did have the advantage of hindsight on March 19th, then it would have been wise for him to downplay the virus because he knew that it wasn't going to be as bad as it actually was. He can't simultaneously believe that the virus was going to be bad, thus want to downplay it, and then also think that the virus wasn't going to be all that bad and downplay it for nefarious reasons. Those two things cannot possibly happen they cannot be true at the same time. And by the way, you don't have to take my word for it. Again, let's listen to Dr. Fauci. We get up in front of the press conferences, which were very, very common after our discussions mm -hmm. with the president. He really didn't say anything different than we discussed when we were with him. So that's Dr. Anthony Fauci, the guy who was with Trump every step of the way all through this saying, yeah, he didn't really distort anything. He basically said the same stuff behind closed doors that he did in front of it. It wasn't like we were having some kind of secret cabal back there thing. ooh, this virus is going to be really bad. Now, let's pretend that it's not going to be. That's not a thing that President Trump did. And what's hilarious about this is Dr. Fauci saying this completely destroys the narrative of the left 
because they've been treating him this entire time like he's some kind of golden boy. Because they've tried to craft this narrative that Trump and Fauci hate each other, that Fauci's actually the good guy, he's actually the smart one, he's the one that is telling everybody to do what they ought to be doing, and that Trump is the evil, very bad ogre and, and very bad orange man that is keeping Dr. Fauci from uh, being able to do what he thinks needs to be done. But that all falls apart if Dr. Fauci is the one saying that, no, Trump wasn't distorting anything. He was saying essentially the same thing we were saying behind closed doors. See, this is part of the reason that it's very, very foolish to put people up on political pedestals. Now, in this case, it hilariously works out to my advantage, so I'm fine with it because I love seeing Democrats shoot themselves in their, in their own foot. But the reason that that's not a smart thing to do is because the left and the media has put Dr. Fauci on such a high pedestal that whenever he contradicts something that they're trying to say, they look foolish for disagreeing with him. And so that's really the, the problem that they've run into. And let's say that the, the media narrative were correct, that Dr. Fauci and Trump really do secretly hate each other, and, and Dr. Fauci has been wanting to, uh, he, he's the one that's really the champion and telling the truth, and Trump's just trying to distort everything and lie about everything. Wouldn't Dr. Fauci have said something? Like, if Trump really was thinking that the virus was super bad, but he was intentionally downplaying it, don't you think that Dr. Fauci would have said something at the time? He can't be this courageous, crusading knight that's going to ride in on a white horse and is brave and, and all of this stuff and simultaneously be a coward who wouldn't tell the American people that the president is lying to you and trying to downplay it for his own political gain. He can't be those two people at the same time. So again, their narrative collapses in on itself because it's not consistent. People ask me all the time, Caleb, how do you stay in such great shape? Well, let me tell you, it's not easy. The secret is a steady diet consisting mostly of likes and subscriptions, especially the ones where the person hits the notification bell. That's what actually gives me my superhuman strength. Likes, as it turns out, are very high in protein and iron. Sadly, doesn't do anything for your hair.